One of the most effective and enjoyable ways to learn about something is to model it. In the last several lessons of our Earth Science class, we've talked about igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. Today, we're going to put that knowledge into action and explore each step of the rock cycle. But instead of using rocks, which need to be heated to more than a thousand degrees Celsius to melt, we're going to be using candy. I'm Science Mom. I'm Meth Dad. If you would like to join us in exploring today's candy rock cycle activity, then you're going to want some chewy, stretchable candy, waxed paper or parchment paper, a plate, and a microwave or stove. A hairdryer and granulated sugar are optional items that we'll be using as well. For carbon skittle dating, our second activity, you can use any two-sided candy that you'd like, such as skittles or M&Ms, or you can use coins. Whatever item you use, you'll want about 50 of them and a cup to hold them. This is gonna be my favorite activity yet. There is a rule though, you can't eat your candy until after you've recorded your data. Oh, of course, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> The first step of the rock cycle that we're going to explore today is weathering and erosion. Weathering is when small pieces of a rock break off. This happens to every type of rock, and there are a lot of different causes of weathering. When water in a crack freezes, it expands, causing the rock to break. Plant roots can do the same thing. Wind, water, and gravity all contribute to weathering, the wearing down of something. In our candy rock cycle, our hands are going to be the force of weathering. So if you plan to eat your rocks when you're done with this activity, be sure to wash your hands first. Now it's time for a contest to see who can make the best sedimentary rocks. You're going down, science mom. I don't think so, math dad. Ooh. There are really just two steps here. Gather your sediments and push them together gently. You can create your rock to have colorful layers or be more random in color pattern. In nature, the way sedimentary rocks form, many of them do have layers. Are those layers made of starbursts and airheads? They are not made of candy. They are made of things like sand and silt and rocks or gravel. That's less exciting, but cool too. If your candy is cold, it's going to be really difficult to break off pieces. Hold it in your hands for a few minutes to warm it up, then it will be a lot easier to break it into smaller pieces. We have weathered these bigger pieces of candy into a lot of smaller pieces or sediments. When these sediments move to a different location, that's erosion. Now that we have a collection of sediments, we can put them together into a sedimentary rock. Most types of taffy or chewy candy will stick together really well just by applying a little bit of pressure. But if we want to cement them together, we could apply a little bit of sugar solution to our sedimentary rock and then let it dry. But this will make your rock a lot stickier and if you use too much cement or sugar water, it can lead to a big mess. No, 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 no messes. So even though cementing is necessary in nature for the formation of a sedimentary rock, we recommend skipping it for the candy rock cycle. Sedimentary rocks are often formed underground. The pressure of another layer of sediment or rock on top of them and minerals in the groundwater combine to help compact and cement the pieces of sediment together into rock. But what if this rock is pushed deeper underground? And what if the temperatures and pressure are high enough to actually transform the minerals of the rock, but not to melt it completely? Is that how we get metamorphic rock? That is exactly how we get metamorphic rocks. Okay, so how do we simulate this with candy? So with candy, we are going to use parchment paper. We're going to put our sedimentary rock in between the two layers of parchment, and then we're going to push down hard. If your rock is kind of cold and it's not responding to the pressure, you can use a hairdryer to warm it up slightly, and then when you apply pressure, you should feel it move quite a bit. Just be careful with the hairdryer because those things can get hot. They can. So a mountain weighs a lot more than I do and can probably push a lot harder. I think about rocks and it seems like they would be too strong to break under pressure. But if you put a mountain on a rock, that's a lot of pressure. 
And if it's really hot, the rock can actually bend and be deformed. Metamorphic rocks are not created at the surface of our planet, they're created deep down in the crust. Sedimentary versus metamorphic. So here's my sedimentary rock and the one that I made metamorphic. Do you notice any differences between these two? Well, my sedimentary rock's twice as tall as my <laughs> metamorphic rock. Yours too. Yes, we definitely squished and flattened them and the layers merged together a lot more. There's not as distinct a boundary between these colors. They both look delicious. <laughs> no eating them yet, Math Dad. Okay. All right, so that's sedimentary rock and metamorphic rock, but what about igneous rock? To make our igneous candy rocks, we are going to need to use a microwave carefully and melt our candy completely. Ooh, parental supervision is a must on this one. You'll want to put your rock into the microwave and then carefully heat it just five to 10 seconds at a time. Once it gets soft and melts, it will go from soft and squishy to bubbling really quickly. So we take it out as soon as it starts bubbling. Yes, as soon as it starts bubbling, it is melted and you don't want to be cooking it any longer than necessary. It is also going to be very hot, so do not touch your rock until it has cooled completely. This will take 10 to 15 minutes at least. You might want to put it in the fridge to help it cool a little more quickly. If you don't have a microwave, you can also heat your candy rock on the stovetop. Whatever method you use, be sure you have adult supervision. Also, keep in mind, it can be very difficult to remove your igneous rock from the plate. I recommend either using a paper plate, which can be thrown away after the activity, or using parchment paper. The parchment paper will peel away from your igneous rock and then you'll be able to enjoy it. In case you're wondering, lava candy will burn your tongue. It wouldn't taste good. You wouldn't have any taste buds left. Yeah, so don't eat it when it's hot. You have to wait until it cools completely. Once it cools, something interesting about your igneous rock is that it has a completely different texture than the metamorphic or the sedimentary rock. It, it almost seems like a lollipop. It is much more like a lollipop. It has become brittle and really hard. It is not a chewable candy anymore at all. Now, if your igneous rock gets off the parchment paper and onto the plate, or if you decide to just put it on a regular plate and microwave it, it's going to be extremely difficult to get it off the plate. The best approach to use is to soak the plate in water with a spoonful of vinegar and let it sit for at least 20 minutes. Then it should all dissolve and you'll be able to get your plate back. We made a sedimentary rock into an igneous rock. Can an igneous rock become a metamorphic rock? It can, yes. In fact, any type of rock can be changed into any other type of rock. The rock cycle is really more of a rock figure eight complicated <laughs> loop of possibilities. All of these processes of rocks breaking down, being buried, being heated, being melted, they're happening all the time, simultaneously, all over our planet. What I really want to know, science mom, is which type tastes the best? Well, before you eat your rocks, you should print out page 75 of our notes. It's a journal page for you where you can draw pictures of your candy rocks and describe them. What did they look like? Did they have any similarities to actual rocks that you've seen? Which was your favorite? And now that you've recorded your data, you can taste them. Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Mine has melted so much, it's hard to even distinguish what went into this. I can't tell which part was Starburst or which part was Airhead candy. It's all merged together. And mine no longer resembles Captain America's shield. <laughs> <laughs> so, Math Dad, which one do you think tastes the best? Mmm. Mmm. Well, the ones that melt, it really changes the texture. It's almost more like a like a sucker or a lollipop now. It it's, is. It's brittle and it breaks. And it's not something I really want to chew on because it's sticking to my teeth really badly. Mm, I, I kind of agree. Mm. So the igneous rock is not my favorite to eat. I'm gonna like the chewy candy, like the, the sedimentary is the most chewy still, or the softest, because it hasn't been compacted as much. So I'd probably say sedimentary is my favorite. Sedimentary is your favorite? And yours? Well, I have the same sentiment. <laughs> same sediment, I guess. I saw it, see what you did there, science mom. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the rock cycle with us. And the next time you're outside, take a look around you. See if you can identify if the rocks in your neighborhood are igneous, metamorphic, or sedimentary.
if you've ever wondered how old a rock is, well, that can be a tricky puzzle to figure out. One of the key tools that scientists use to figure that out is called radiometric dating. And today we're going to explore a simple example using candy. So this simple activity helps us to better understand radioactive decay, which is a super useful tool. You see, there are different types of elements. Carbon is an element that we are made of, and there's a certain type of carbon, an isotope, called carbon-14. And carbon-14 decays. That means it breaks apart and changes into something else, changes into nitrogen, in fact. Mm -hmm. And so if you can measure the amount of carbon-14 that is in something, you know how old it is because there are very small amounts of carbon-14 in our food and in the, the atmosphere all around us. They're created naturally by radiation from the sun. Is it only in living things? Only in living things. Ah. Once something dies, then that thing is no longer eating new carbon-14. And so the carbon that is inside that tree trunk or whatever it was that used to be alive slowly begins to decay. Now let's take a look at this process with candy. I have 50 Skittles. You can use any type of candy as long as it has two distinct sides. One side that has a mark, whether that is an S for a Skittle or an M for an M&M, &M, or if you want to use a coin, just pick heads or tails. And your side with a mark, that's going to be your quote unquote carbon that is still radioactive. And your side that does not have a mark, that's the carbon that decayed. So you shake up your candy, which represents your 50 atoms of carbon, and then you dump it out on the table and you separate the ones that decayed from the ones that have not decayed. And then you put your radioactive carbons back into the container. But of course, these are not carbon atoms, they are candy, but it represents what really happens when things decay because you have about half of your material that will decay every about 5,000 years with carbon-14. Be sure to keep a record so that you can do the graph and complete the activity in the notes. Yes. So you can see that the first time we did it, we had 26 that had not yet decayed. Then we shook it, our cup and poured them out the, again and we got 16. We put the ones that had not decayed back in the cup, shook them, poured it out again. We have six and then four and then one, 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 <laughs> that last one <laughs> did not want to decay, but it eventually did. There is variation when you do this. You will get slightly different numbers each time. We recommend that you do this at least three times and then take an average so you can see that you usually get half the decay, but sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. In fact, this is so much fun that we want to try running a simulation. So I ran this simulation 20 different times to see how many Skittles would be left. And boy, it's nice and colorful, and those numbers are all over the place. But overall, what we're seeing is this long-term trend where about half of them disappear each time. So that this curve here shows the model. So in an actual organism where there are millions and millions of these simulations going on, well then we can expect it to follow this curve pretty closely and that's going to allow us to estimate how old something is. We can measure the amount of carbon-14 left in it and we can do some mathematics to reverse engineer and figure out how long ago it died. So I've got a question for you, Math Dad. If I was doing this Skittle experiment and I came up to you and I said I have four Skittles left, would you be able to tell how many times I dumped out my cup? I would not be able to tell, although we could attempt to make some estimates. We could try to work backwards. If you have four Skittles now, my best guess is maybe you had eight the previous time, and then the previous time maybe 16, I'm just doubling it each time, then 32, and then well, probably all 50. I mean, so I, I could make some guesses. So how many steps did I just take back? Four steps. So my guess is that you would have 
been, I've, I've done four trials already. The amount of time it takes for half of the atoms to decay and break down into something else is called the half-life. And the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. It takes a long time for carbon-14 to completely break down. This means that we can use carbon dating to date things that are up to 50,000 years old. Okay, that is super cool. So we could use this to tell how old a rock is, right? Actually, no. Most rocks are way older than that. And so for telling how old a rock is, scientists actually use different elements because potassium and uranium are elements that also undergo decay. And by looking at those elements, scientists can tell how old rocks are. This is super cool. All these tools that have been developed. I'm re really impressed that scientists are, are that smart. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the rock cycle and carbon dating and radioactive decay. And I hope you brush your teeth after eating all that candy. Yes, please do brush your teeth if you ate all the candy used in making these two activities. Work hard, grow smart, and we'll see you next time.